I'm stepping up into a leadership position in my nonprofit organization. Congratulations, right on, way to go. Advance the mission, make a difference. What should I know about finance? What are temporarily restricted assets? All right, so the question about what you should know about finance is more than I can answer here, but I'll give you a really quick overview and then I will um, answer your question about temporarily restricted assets. The overview thing is, the overview issue is, you need to know how to either supervise or coordinate with, depending on the nature of your leadership role, an accounting team. Don't suddenly think, oh my gosh, I'm a leader now, I have to learn debits and credits. No, no, no. Learn how to supervise an accounting team, learn what they're capable of, learn what the organization needs, because if there's a gap of what they're currently, uh, what they currently know how to do, and what the organization needs them to do, you as an organizational leader may be in a position to re recommend to professional development, find out what other organizations are, are doing. My gosh, they're getting a, a statement of functional expenses year round. My gosh, they're getting an income statement by grant. I didn't know we can do that. Hey guys, you say to your accounting team, can you all figure out how to do that? Notice I'm not saying you should all of a sudden become an expert in accounting technology. I presume that the organizational leadership position you're talking about, if you're asking what should I know about finance, is not the chief financial officer or finance director. So if you're stepping into a role of um, executive director or program director or director of development, you're going to need to coordinate with accounting and finance. And maybe you'll say, wow, my gosh, I didn't know if I, could, I didn't know that I could get a report um, just for one of the programs that we ran from our accounting system. I didn't know we could get that. Well, if you if you talk um, with other organizations and find out what reports they're getting, maybe you can go to your team and say, hey guys, can we figure out how to do this? It could involve new processes. It could involve new technology. It's, it's worth it if you as an organizational leader know that you can go out and make mission empowered with that information. Make money, save money, save time. Increase peace of mind. So that's, and then of course, um, if you're at the level of executive director, internal controls, always a big thing. That's something that you're going to want to get, um, get schooled on, set policy, and work with your top financial person to set um, procedures to strengthen and make to strengthen internal controls, make sure they're strong in your organization. The internal controls have two overall purposes. One, to protect organizational assets, and two, to help ensure that the financial statements that you're looking at and that your board is looking at and that your donors are looking at actually reflect what's happening in the organization. Internal controls help make those two things happen. Um, in answer to your question about what are temporarily restricted assets, the full name is temporarily restricted net assets. But I'll, I'll answer the question as asked also. I'm just guessing that you're missing the word net. Temporarily restricted net assets um, are funds that have been pledged or received by your organization that either have what's called a time restriction or a purpose restriction. Meaning someone donated a thousand dollars now, but you can't use it until November because these are funds for a November thing. Um, or someone pledges a thousand dollars now, they're going to pay whenever, but when they pledge it, you record the pledge receivable against temporarily restricted net assets. It's not going to be recognized as revenue until October because that's, that's part of the, the terms of the donation. That's a time restriction. Then there's also a use restriction saying, hey, we're going to give you a thousand dollars, but it can only, or and, it can only be used for the Casual Framets program. So whenever it is that you have the Casual Framets program, if it's October, it's November, it's next week, it's two months from now, it's a year from now, they're designated as temporarily restricted net assets until you actually have that program, at which, and at which point you recognize the revenue. Of course, you'll recognize any expenses that the organization incurs related to that program as well. Some temporarily restrict, restricted net assets are the result of a donation or a pledge that the, the, use, the use restriction or the time restriction seem to be together, but it doesn't matter. It doesn't make anything more complicated. The Casual Framage Program, which is in September, is the one thing that you're allowed to use $1,000 on. 
fine. Who cares? It's, you know, just watch, just make sure that um, whoever's doing the accounting for this um, recognizes the revenue and takes it out of temporarily restricted net assets, recognize the revenue, which means now it's part of unrestricted net assets, at the time of this program, when this program is actually taking place. 